Like many of the big name hurricanes in history, Francis was born from a so-called Cape Verde tropical wave off of the west coast of Africa. The large envelope of moisture and rising air moved steadily westward across the deep tropical Atlantic. By August 24th, the National Hurricane Center had upgraded the cluster of clouds to tropical depression number six, soon to be Francis. Francis became a hurricane on August 26 as it moved over the open waters of the Atlantic. Initial thoughts were that perhaps, and hopefully, Francis would turn harmlessly out to sea, like so many powerful Cape Verde hurricanes have since 1995. But this was not to be the case with Francis. The once extremely powerful Category 4 hurricane was going to hit somewhere in Florida, ranging from a nearly impossible strike on Jacksonville to a hit near Fort Pierce. Once again, we set our sights for Florida. Between the time of Hurricane Charlie and Hurricane Francis, I had worked hard to make the Hurricane Landfall Project a reality. I took the venerable Isuzu Rodeo to the local Mako paint shop. There, it was primed and ready for a new look. Bright yellow. This was to make it easier to spot the vehicle should we ever lose it, if you know what I mean. Once the new paint job had been applied, I visited my good friends at Edwards Incorporated in Wilmington for some additional welding to be done. The guys there are always coming up with some comment. We're going to sink it. <laughs> Hurricane Francis is going to sink it. She's going to claim it as her own. The idea was to add anchor points in which we would place tie downs from lows that would hopefully mitigate any chance of the Isuzu flying through the air. We also made the mini tower stronger so that the mast would hold up better in a powerful hurricane. This is what it all looked like once we were ready to roll. The Hurricane Landfall Project was off to a great start, and we were off to Florida. now Thursday, September 2nd, and we are heading for Daytona Beach for use as our base camp. Seeing the massive evacuation traffic, it was clear that people were taking Francis seriously. Hi, Mark Settles with HurricaneTrack.com. Jesse, I don't know if you can see this whole paper. This pretty much says it all. There is a mass exodus from Florida going on as people leave and flee the path of Hurricane Francis. We're here at the Holiday Inn Express in Daytona Beach right off the Interstate 95. Jesse, if you can get a shot, they're obviously boarding up the windows here as they get ready for what may be a potential hurricane force wind impact, possibly as far north as Daytona Beach. People aren't taking any chances, so they're getting ready all over the east coast of Florida. Everywhere we went, people were getting ready for Francis. This area had not seen a major hurricane threat in a long time, and so people were taking the action needed to be ready for this hurricane. After working with the media some, we visited the Lowe's store in Ormond Beach for a few supplies. But then it became a waiting game. Francis had slowed down considerably and had weakened some as well. So we took some time to visit the famous Daytona Beach. Francis had ruined the Labor Day weekend for folks in a good deal of Florida, but you would never have known that a hurricane was coming. It is very rare to see Daytona Beach look so empty, I'm sure. 
the coastal Mecca looked deserted, and in fact, it mostly was. Everywhere we went, the people were gone. Businesses were boarded up, awaiting the arrival of Francis. Hi, I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com, coming to you from Daytona Beach, Florida, near the Interstate 95 off-ramp. We're not right down on the beach of Daytona Beach, but we are certainly, I guess this is the city limits. We're very close, actually, to the Daytona International Speedway, where they hold the Daytona 500, of course. It's kind of breezy here, not much rain to speak of yet, maybe a few drizzle drops here and there, nothing, no big deal, certainly. As the hurricane gets closer, even though it's weakened down to 105 miles per hour, We'll see those rain bands move on shore, the wind will pick up, and of course the rain will start coming down in buckets, that's for sure. As you can see behind me here, there is the Isuzu Rodeo. We're getting ready to pull that out and get it ready for the hurricane landfall project. We're not exactly sure what's going to happen with that because this is not a very intense hurricane. It's not to say that it's not dangerous, but we're not dealing with a Category 4 where we have to go in and put the Isuzu and then run 30 miles out of the way. It can still strengthen a little bit, of course, before landfall, but we're not staring down the barrel of a Category 4 hurricane, which is certainly good news. We'll continue to bring you these video updates, and of course, as things start to unfold here weather-wise, they will become more dramatic, and you'll get to see more of the effects of this hurricane. For HurricaneTrack.com, I am Mark Sutta. Thanks for watching. After one more night of waiting, the time had come to head south. We took off the next morning, Saturday, September the 4th, towards Jensen Beach. This would be our staging area to prepare the HLP vehicle for its first big test. I-95 South was as empty as I have ever seen it. There was literally no traffic heading south, and why not? There was a large hurricane looming just offshore. Hi, Mark Sutter from HurricaneTrack.com. We're here in Jensen Beach under shelter of the Lowe's in Jensen Beach. As you can see behind me, we do have pretty strong winds. This is not a Hurricane Charlie situation, but this is very prolonged. We've already seen a lot of power lines dangling, a lot of trees down, and the power is out in a lot of the area this short. We're going to have more video updates later on. We're getting ready to take the Isuzu Rodeo and put it out in the open and let it start transmitting the weather data back to the website. For HurricaneTrack.com, I am Mark Suttoth. Thank you for watching. We'll have we departed the Lowe's store in Jensen Beach for Hutchinson Island. That is where we would place the HLP vehicle for its first mission as an unmanned drone. You there, John? Already, Francis had done a number on the region. Trees, power lines, and stoplights were down in most of the area. We had to be careful with our drive out to the island. As Francis slowly approached the coast, we picked a spot along the causeway called Sewell's Point. It was wide open for the most part and not near the ocean enough to be concerned about storm surge washing the HLP vehicle away. Come, we're down on Jensen Beach. I guess this is actually Hutchinson Island. We're on the barrier island. There's the Hurricane Landfall Project truck right there, John, if you'll pan around. It took some effort, but it is set up. We're getting ready to leave. John, show them the storm surge coming in right here.
Francis was not Charlie in that we were not expecting much over 100 mile per hour winds. Still, it was a prolonged event and the area was being battered by hurricane force winds for many, many hours. One of the amazing things about our work is the fact that we can use the Sprint PCS network anywhere that they have coverage to make updates to the website. This is the only way that we can keep you caught up on what we're experiencing in the field. Now one of the tools we were using on the HLP vehicle is a series of scuba housings with video cameras in them. There is not much to see here, but the other cameras caught what action there was. Let's speed it up to cover several hours of Francis. You can see a little bit of water spilling in from the Intracoastal Waterway. Remember, Francis was not a very powerful hurricane so its effects were not as dramatic as what was felt during Charlie. Nonetheless, the time lapse shows the evolution of Francis from this point of view on into the night. The other camera was aimed towards the Intracoastal waterway and it too lasted for several hours. Although there is nothing too dramatic here, it helped prove to me that the idea of leaving a camera in the scuba housing was a worthy cause and one that would work when it really counted. As the night wore on, the center of Francis edged closer and closer to the coast. I remained out on Hutchinson Island and monitored the HLP vehicle, while Jesse and John went inland to the St. Lucie County EOC. I kid you not, this is not snow, it is the eye of Hurricane Francis. I am standing here at Hutchinson Island, Florida, and it looks like it's snowing. What in the world is it? I guess it's drizzle. But, I mean, folks, this is the eye of a hurricane. You can see the damage over this way. The trees are all still. That's incredible. And then look up at the sky. It looks like a blizzard. But it's huge pieces of drizzle. Never seen anything like it before. Unbelievable. The next morning, Francis was still raging outside. The slow moving hurricane was really beginning to become a pain in the neck. And it wasn't over yet.
The HLP vehicle had made it through the night without any problems. All of the data recording equipment functioned as it should have, and it passed the first test. Most of the damage that we saw on Hutchinson Island was minimal compared to what it could have been. The problem was that the damage was widespread throughout a great deal of South Central Florida. We finally departed the area to head back north to Daytona Beach. Even though we were prepared with extra gasoline, it was not enough to get us back home. We can get under the shelter up here and take care of the gas we've got. Because I've got enough to get us a, a good ways up the interstate. As long as we just distribute it evenly, we'll be okay. Oh, okay. The yeah, front, the yeah, island south of us, we're moving the island off. We're right in the north water the whole time. Yeah, we got a little bit. Throughout the day of September the 5th, Francis continued to plague everything and everyone. There were lines for gasoline everywhere we went. Some places had it, some did not. We spent one extra night in Daytona before finally being able to fill up and head home. As we traveled back north up the interstate, we witnessed the reverse evacuation traffic coming back into Florida. Little did these folks know that Francis would not be the end of their hurricane trouble.